Hello, this video is going to be related to water versus lipid soluble molecules and permissiveness in relation to thyroid hormone and growth hormone. Uh, if I ask a question, it's a good time to pause and check your understanding. So what we have here is a cell. Inside the cell is intracellular fluid. What's another name for intracellular fluid? Another name for intracellular fluid is cytosol, which is primarily made out of water. On the other side of the cell, bathing the cell, is interstitial fluid, which is also primarily made out of water. And then we have the plasma membrane. a barrier between the inside and the outside of the cell. Is this barrier made out of water or lipids? It is made out of lipids or fats. Are lipids hydrophobic or hydrophilic? Lipids are hydrophobic. So the cytosol, hydrophilic, interstitial fluid, hydrophilic, plasma membrane, in the middle of the two, hydrophobic. As said a moment ago, the plasma membrane is a barrier between the inside and the outside. That barrier is semi-permeable. What that means is it only lets some substances through. It's essentially a, a checkpoint. Okay? And for that checkpoint, the only thing that the plasma membrane will let through are small, nonpolar molecules. So what can pass through, or what is allowed to pass through, is made out of similar substances to the plasma membrane itself, which are nonpolar molecules, such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, and in this unit, thyroid hormone and steroid hormones, which are the hormones that end in own estrogen, and cortisol. For our purposes, all the other hormones we'll discuss are not made out of substances that are similar to limpids. They're made out of substances similar to water. So when they try to get through the plasma membrane, they are rejected, both on the inside and outside of the cell. These substances are polar. And for our, our purposes, it'll be every other hormone that we discuss. So next, you have to decide if nonpolar or polar go with lipid-soluble versus water-soluble. I'll give you a second to try to remember which vo vocabulary word goes with nonpolar versus polar lipid-soluble or water-soluble. Ideally, you stated that nonpolar also means lipid-soluble, while polar means water-soluble. Essentially, lipid-soluble means can pass through the lipids. Water-soluble means can pass through water. We're going to utilize lipid versus water-soluble to understand 
permissive hormone relationships. So we already discussed that synergistic, sin, the prefix sin, like synonym means same. Antagonist, antagonistic, anti, means opposing actions. Permissive means, oops, permissive means permission. One hormone gives the other hormone permission to work. And a way that makes the most sense to us is one hormone will will essentially allow the other hormone's receptor to be expressed. So I'm going to give you an example of that now. Here we have the bloodstream. And inside the bloodstream we have water, we have uh, hormones, gases, plasma proteins, red blood cells, white blood cells. What's important to us right now will be two hormones. This will be thyroid hormone and this will be growth hormone. Okay, one of these is lipid soluble and one is water soluble, and blood is mostly made out of water. Therefore, one of these will need protection in the bloodstream. Which one will need some sort of protection from the water in the bloodstream? Lipid soluble molecules which are hydrophobic, are not going to do well in a watery environment. So they will need a carrier protein. And as such, they are protected from degrading enzymes and have a longer half-life. So next, you have to decide, can thyroid hormone pass through the plasma membrane? And once you've decided that, you have to decide where is its target receptor going to be located? Embedded in the plasma membrane or inside the cell? Where is that receptor located? That receptor is going to be located inside the cell because thyroid hormone can pass through the plasma membrane. Notice I drew it like a triangle. I drew it like a triangle because the shapes or the amino acid conformation of the receptor and the hormone have to match. So when the receptor binds to the hormone intracellularly, this intracellular receptor has access to the nucleus. And inside the nucleus is DNA. And on that DNA is a gene that's going to code for growth hormone receptor, which, as its name implies, will receive the growth hormone signal or chemical messenger. When the receptor, when the thyroid hormone receptor binds the thyroid hormone, it's going to result in a change in the shape or the, a conformational change uh, in shape of the thyroid hormone receptor. The thyroid hormone receptor will go to the nucleus and it will bind an area of the DNA close to the growth hormone receptor. Where it binds will depend on the shape of the other side of the receptor. Different shapes will cause hormones to bind to different what are called hormone response elements. Because the shape is different on that other side of the receptor, 
thyroid hormone will bind to different parts of the DNA than estrogen or testosterone would. When thyroid hormone receptor binds to its hormone response element, it will result in mRNA expression of growth hormone receptor. That mRNA will then be turned into protein in the cytosol, and protein changes function. Proteins do the jobs inside of a cell. So if you're making a new protein, the cell is going to act differently now. And in fact, now the protein has growth hormone receptor, which through actions of the Golgi apparatus from your previous classes you've learned, is going to embed into the plasma membrane. We call this a hormone's cellular response. We, we aren't going to waste time making hormones that don't do a job. It has to do a job, and a cellular response is that job. Notice the growth hormone receptor has a circle, while the thyroid hormone had a triangle. This indicates the um, different binding product. Uh, the different binding possibilities of these two receptors. That's why the thyroid hormone can't fit in the growth hormone receptor and growth hormone can fit in the thyroid hormone receptor. Now notice I put the growth hormone receptor embedded in the plasma membrane. What does that tell you about growth hormone? Is it water soluble or lipid soluble? tells you that growth hormone is water soluble because it is unable to pass through the plasma membrane. Since this receptor is embedded in the plasma membrane, is it able to access the DNA? No, it's stuck inside the plasma membrane. Therefore, if it's going to have a cellular response, it's going to have to use a different mechanism. And it's going to use signal transduction. The hormone is a first messenger, and it's going to activate second messengers intracellularly by basically turning a bunch of proteins and enzymes from an off state to an on state as discussed in class. And when we go from an off state to an on state, we will eventually have a cellular response. So essentially, I've just showed you how thyroid hormone is permissive to growth hormone. If there was no thyroid hormone, if there was no thyroid hormone here, Sorry, one second. Okay. If there was no thyroid hormone, there would be no growth hormone receptor. And if there's no growth hormone receptor, there's nothing for growth hormone to bind to. And if there's nothing for growth hormone to bind to, there won't be a way to activate a signal transduction mechanism. And without a signal transduction mechanism, there's no cellular response. Now try it yourself. Try saying it yourself. If there's no thyroid hormone, dot, 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 try kind of going through this process yourself. Okay. If there's no thyroid hormone, if this step doesn't happen, then this step won't happen. No thyroid hormone, no growth hormone receptor made. If there's no growth hormone receptor made, growth hormone has nothing to bind to. This cell won't be able to receive a growth hormone signal. No growth hormone signal, no signal transduction mechanism, no signal transduction mechanism, no cellular response. For growth hormone to work, thyroid hormone must be present.